Are you ready to start selling your products online? If so, you need to choose a reliable, responsive and feature-packed online store builder. One of the best solutions and easiest ways to create a stunning online store is by using the no-code e-commerce platform called Shopify. Shopify allows anyone to quickly create a fully functional online store. Simply list your products, add your apps and customize your online store. You can also engage in email marketing activities and much more. Hey guys, Stuart here, welcome along to this channel. I hope all is well on your side of the world. Now today in this complete updated Shopify tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process of how to set up, design and launch your Shopify store from start to finish. And you do not need any previous experience to follow this tutorial and create your own DIY e-commerce website. Okay, so before we go ahead and dive into Shopify, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel, and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge, and tools to help your small business thrive online. And with that happy note out of the way, let's go ahead and launch into this complete Shopify tutorial for beginners. <music> Okay, so diving right in and creating our stunning full feature online store with Shopify, you first wanna head over to your browser and type in shopify.com and that's gonna take you here or feel free to click the link in our description below this video and that's also going to take you to this landing page. Now, getting started with Shopify, you have access to a free three-day trial, which means you can try Shopify for three days without paying anything. Then you can also enjoy three months of Shopify for only $1 per month. Then after those three months, you'll be paying the regular price depending on the plan that you go for. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the free trial. Simply navigate up to enter your email address and simply add your email address that you wanna get started with. Then click start free trial. I'm going to select I'm just getting started and then click next. Then click next again. We're gonna talk about the different channels that you can leverage later on. Here you have the option to select the option that best describes what you're selling, then go ahead and click next again. This is where you can let Shopify know if you already have an online audience or following. Again, we're going to talk more about leveraging these different platforms like YouTube, Instagram and Twitter later on. For now, I'm just going to simply click no and then click next. For the purpose of today's tutorial, I'm going to use a made up business called Gould & Garrett, which is going to be a jewelry business, a jewelry online store. Okay, so once you've added your business name, your store name, come down and click on next. Again, you can always change this at any time. Then select the country that your business is located in. And then click on next. Then select how you want to create a Shopify ID. Here I'm going to add my email again, then password, and then come down and click create Shopify ID. Give Shopify a moment to set up your account. Okay, so here we are inside our Shopify backend. Now, before we dive into actually creating our online store, designing our storefront, adding products and selling online, we first want to make sure that our account is set up correctly. To do that, let's go ahead and pick a plan. This is going to allow us to enjoy three months of Shopify for only $1 per month. This is going to allow you to identify if Shopify is the right online store builder for your business. Remember, you also have a three-day free trial, meaning you can follow this tutorial and not add your payment details if you don't want to. But to get the most out of Shopify, I'm gonna go ahead and pick a plan and then navigate down and choose basic. This is the Shopify plan that you wanna get started with. Choose your billing cycle, then go ahead and add your business address. Then once you've added your business details, come down and click on save address. Select the payment method and go ahead and add your details. Then once you've added your payment details, go ahead and click add. Then click on start plan. And just like that, we've set up our Shopify plan. Now what we wanna do is navigate over to the bottom left hand corner and click on settings. Then navigate over to domains. Now at the moment, our Shopify store is using this free Shopify domain. If you wanna buy a custom domain, all you need to do is navigate up to buy new domain or you can connect an existing domain if you already have one. Now choosing the right custom domain name for your online store is important for branding and professionalism. 
And if you want to learn more about how to choose the right domain name for your business, what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description, which will guide you through the process of how to choose the right domain name for your business. I'm going to go ahead and buy a new domain name because I currently do not have one for this business. So I'm going to type in my business name and see if the right domain is available. And as you can see, gouldandgarrett.com is available. This is the domain name that I want. You can see that this is $15 per year. I'm going to go ahead and buy this domain and then click on buy domain. Then what we want to do is navigate down to email forwarding. You can find email forwarding under domains. So I've already gone ahead and purchased a professional domain name. Remember, you can continue using Shopify's free branded domain name if you like. However, it is recommended long term that you do upgrade to a professional domain name. Okay, so under email forwarding, this is where we can set up our professional email for our online store. If we navigate down here, you can see by default that the forwarding email info at gouldandgarrett.com has already been set up. This means that if a potential customer, an online store visitor, sends an email to this email over here, then we will receive that email at this primary email. This is the email that I use to set up our Shopify store, and we can change this at any time if we like. So for example, I can navigate up to add email forwarding, and I'm gonna navigate up here and add the email Stuart at goldengarrett.com. And then down here, I'm going to add the receiving email address again, which is the same email I'm using for my Shopify store. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on save. And as you can see, I now have two professional forwarding emails. I have info at goldengarrett.com and Stuart at goldengarrett.com, which means if I add these to my website or I receive an email to any of these addresses, then I'll receive them in my inbox at this email. Now, if you already use a professional email service like Google Workspace, Zoho, Microsoft, then what you can do is always switch to email hosting if you like. However, the great thing about Shopify, when you purchase a domain name within Shopify, you can set up email forwarding completely for free. And again, this adds to the professionalism of your online store. Okay, so now that we've set up our domain name and we've also set up our email forwarding, what we're going to do is navigate back over to store details. And we need to confirm that we have access to the inbox of this email. Simply go ahead and click on sender email settings and click on send verification email. And within that email inbox, go ahead and confirm the email. Then within your email, what you also want to do is find the verify your domain's contact information. This is if you purchased a domain name within Shopify. We need to verify this domain. Simply come down and click on this link here and then make sure your domain's information is correct and then click on verify information. And just like that, you've verified your email and domain. What we're going to do is head back to our Shopify store. Okay, so here we are back inside settings and store details. We've already gone ahead and verified our email and domain. Now what we want to do is navigate up to profile and click on edit. Then navigate down to sender email and add the email forwarding email that you added earlier. Or if you connected a email host, then you want to make sure that you add your professional branded email in here. Then click on save. Now, with the sender email, when you add a professional email like I've done here, that's going to add that email to our Shopify store, meaning if someone signs up to a subscription form or they add their details in a contact form, then the sender information they see is this information here, this email here. Also, if you start using other apps like email marketing apps, then this email, this branded email, will automatically be added to those apps. Okay, so we've completed the initial setup of our online store. What we want to do now is navigate over to users and permissions, click here. Now down here under staff, what we can do is add team members to our online store to help us manage our Shopify store. So go ahead and do that if you like. And below users and permissions, we also want to set up our payments. Click on payments. And this is where we want to choose and set up our payment methods. This is how our customers purchase products, the different payment methods that they can use. This is also how you get paid. 
and ideally what you want to do is set up multiple payment methods now each country is slightly different so depending on the country that you set up your online store in the payment methods will be slightly different and all you need to do is navigate through the process of setting up your account with the different payment methods now the most popular payment method if you have access to this option is shopify payments this is going to allow your customers to choose what payment method they want to use. They can choose to pay for your products with Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Shop Pay, Apple Pay, and Google Pay. So if you have this option, I recommend setting up Shopify payments. Then all the payments from your customers will go directly into the bank account that you set up Shopify payments with. Now we can also navigate down here. And we can set up PayPal as well as add other payment methods. For example, if we click on add payment methods, we can navigate up to search by provider and we can come down and we can search for a payment provider. Now, like I mentioned, depending on the country that you're in, some of these payment methods are going to be limited and you might not be able to access those payment types. So for example, if we wanted to use Amazon payment services, all I would do is click here and then click on activate and navigate through the process of setting up this payment method. It's extremely straightforward. Okay, so I'm gonna navigate back and for the purpose of today's tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead and simply set up my PayPal account. However, ideally, if you have access to Shopify payments, you wanna go ahead and set up this option. I'm gonna come down and click on manage and quickly go ahead and set up my PayPal Express checkout, meaning that my customers can check out using PayPal if they have a PayPal account or they can just use their credit card or Visa cards. Okay, so I've activated PayPal. Once you've gone ahead and activated your payment methods, then what we wanna do is move on to shipping and delivery. And this is where we want to set up shipping and delivery. Under general shipping rates, we're gonna navigate over to manage. And this is where you want to take the time to set up your shipping zones. Now, depending on the nature of your online store, whether you sell domestically, internationally, or you're limiting the countries that you sell to, you want to make sure that you take the time to customize your shipping zones. So at the moment we have domestic shipping for New Zealand. I'm happy with the standard rate and free shipping because I include the price of shipping in the product itself. This makes my products more appealing to my customers and increases the conversion rate because there's no additional fee on top of the product when they go and check out for shipping. However, if I like, I can go ahead and add a shipping rate. Then if I navigate down to international, what I can do is navigate over here next to standard and click on edit rate. And this is where I can customize the standard rate for international shipping. However, ideally what you want to do is identify the shipping cost to send your products to different countries rather than just a standard fee for international shipping. Again, this just depends on the nature of your business. So what I would do is navigate up here and then click on delete international zone. Then I would navigate up to create zone and navigate up here and I'm going to type in Australia and this is going to be the Australian shipping zone. So I'm gonna come down and click on Australia and then navigate down and click on done. And then I'm gonna navigate over to add rate and this is going to be standard and the price is gonna be $5 and I can choose the currency if I like and then I'm gonna click done. I can also add a condition too. So as you can see, if a customer in Australia purchases a product from my online store, then shipping will be added $5 AUD. And again, you want to create shipping zones for all the different countries, regions that you operate in. However, this takes a bit of time to identify the exact pricing. So I'm going to leave this for now and navigate up to save. Remember, every business is different, so we're not going to spend too much time on shipping. Okay, so what we're going to do now is exit out of this and then navigate over to our online store over on the left hand side. So now what we want to do since we've made our way through the settings is actually choose a theme for our online store. So to do that, navigate down and click on add theme and then click on visit theme store. And this is where we can choose a theme for our online store. Think about the theme as the overall design and style of your e-commerce website. If we navigate over to the left hand side, we can filter through these themes based on price, free and paid themes, industry, we can choose a industry, catalog size and features. I'm gonna navigate back up to industry 
and select jewelry and accessory because our website, our online store is a jewelry business. And I'm going to locate a free theme that I want to use. As you can see, this is a paid theme. We have Dawn, which is a free theme. Origin is a free theme. Studio is a free theme. We also have Polisher and a bunch of paid themes down here. I'm going to navigate back up and click on free. And as you can see, there are only five, three themes in this industry. Now, I actually want to use Dawn because I like the look of this. If I click on it, you can try the theme and you can also demo the storefront to see what it's going to look like. Now, I'm actually already using this theme. So Shopify by default is using Dawn for my online store. So I'm going to navigate back to Shopify. And as you can see, Dawn is the current theme I'm using. However, what you want to do is take the time to choose the right theme for your online store. Then once you've selected the theme, simply navigate over to customize. And this is where we can customize our website pages, our online store, the way that we like. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do this in a minute. But first, what we want to do is add products to our Shopify store. To do that, simply navigate over to the left hand side, click exit, and then come down and click on products. Then navigate down and click on add your products. Here we're going to add our first product. Simply navigate up to title and add the title of your product as well as the description. I'm going to quickly go ahead and do that now. And as you can see, I've quickly gone ahead and added a brief description. Now, if we navigate up to the top, we can add basic formatting to our description if we like. If we navigate down and click on auto write, this is going to allow us to leverage AI to generate a different description. Basically, you can even add a bunch of keywords into your description and then select auto write and Shopify is going to generate a description. So let's go ahead and test this out now. I'm going to go ahead and add a few keywords related to this product. Okay, so I've added four keywords and then I'm going to go ahead and click on auto write. And as you can see, this is the AI written description. I can go ahead and click on keep if I like this description or I can rewrite and it actually fits quite well for this product. So I'm going to go ahead and click on keep and cut this section here and paste it somewhere else. And I'm happy with that. Then I'm going to navigate down and under product type, I'm going to add necklace and then hit save. Then we want to come down and add media. And I'm going to add these as the product photos and then click open. And I can simply drag and drop the different images for the placement of these images. So this is the feature image. I'm going to place that in here. Now I can also navigate back up to the description and I can actually go ahead and insert an image if I like as well. I'm going to upload an image and add this image here and click open and then click on the image and then click insert image. I'm going to click on the image here and make it smaller and I'm happy with that. And that's going to add the image into my description as well as these feature images here. And I'll show you exactly what this looks like on our product page shortly. Then navigate down to pricing and add the pricing of your product. You can also compare that product at, and that's going to show a discount on the product page. So I'm going to add $29.99 and the original price is $39.99. So again, this compare at price is optional. Here you have the option to charge tax on this product. This all depends on the nature of your business. For now, I'm going to turn this off because I collect the taxes myself and that's inclusive in my product pricing. Here you can add the cost per item if you like and that's going to show your profit as well as your margin. I'm going to go ahead and add $7.99 and as you can see, the profit is $22 if I sell one piece and the profit margin is 73.4%. Here you can come down to inventory and you can add your stock keeping unit as well as barcode if you have one and you can choose to track quantity or continue selling when out of stock. I'm happy with track quantity, then navigate down, then you can add the shipping weight if you like and then I can select this product ships internationally. I'm going to select the region which is Australia and then I'm going to navigate down to variants and I have different color variants. And I'm going to add three values, gold, silver, and bronze. And I'm happy with those three values. So I'm going to click done. 
and I can select the image for each of these variants. I can also change the pricing if I like, add how many products are on hand, available, and these other options across here. Then we also have the search engine listing. We can go ahead and edit this if we like. This is for SEO. However, I'm happy with the title, which is the name of the product, as well as the URL, the display URL, as well as the description down here, which is the product description. Once you've added all your information, come down and click on save. And over here, you can choose if the product is in draft or if it's currently active on your store. Now, remember, your store is currently not online. It currently has a password, meaning that only if potential customers or individuals have the password for your online store, then they can access your online store. And once we've finished completing, creating, designing our online store, then we can remove the password. Our website will be published online and publicly available for us to start marketing. Okay, so we now have one product. What I'm gonna do is navigate back. Okay, so now you can see we have one product for our online store. I'm gonna quickly go ahead and add two more products for the purpose of today's tutorial. Again, if you wanna add additional products, simply navigate up to add product. You can also click on this product and duplicate the product. If you have other products that are slightly similar and you want some of the information to be the same. Okay, so I've walked you through the process of adding a physical product to your online store. Go ahead and add your additional products by following the same process I just showed you. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly go ahead and add two more products. And as you can see, I've quickly gone ahead and added two more products. Now, there's a few more things I wanna briefly talk about before we move on to customizing our website. So if I go ahead and click on horizontal bar necklace, if you wanna customize the stock, the amount of units you have to sell, navigate down to inventory, and down here you can choose stock units you have available and on hand. Now, if we navigate up to tags, you also wanna make sure that you add tags related to your products. This is going to allow you to organize your products when it comes to marketing, creating discounts, and creating your online store. Again, if we navigate back and we come down to vertical bar necklace, again, if we navigate down the page, you can see that we added variants. So with each variant, that's where we added the amount of stock we have on hand and that is available. So slightly different if you have variants to your products when it comes to managing stock. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is navigate back. I hope you've taken the time to add your products. Now what we wanna do is navigate over to collections and create collections for our products. So I'm just gonna create one collection for now. We already have a homepage collection. I'm gonna click create collection. And this is a group of your products. So I'm gonna navigate over to the title and add stunning unisex necklaces. And then we can add a description if we like. I'm gonna leave that out for now and navigate over to collection image. And I'm just gonna add this image for now. And then if we navigate down to conditions, this is going to allow us to set conditions in terms of what products are going to be added to this collection. So I'm gonna navigate over to product tag and click on product type is equal to, and then navigate over here and click on necklace. So each of the three products that I created under the product type section, when creating each of those products, I added necklace. So that is the condition I want to use. Product type is equal to necklace. And again, you can add additional conditions and you can change the type up here if you like. I'm gonna come down and click on save. And just like that, we've created our collection. Now what we're gonna do is navigate back over to our online store and then click on customize. Okay, so finally we can now start customizing our online store and Shopify makes it extremely easy to do so. You do not need to play around with any code. Anyone can create and customize their online store within Shopify. First up, if we navigate up to the top, you can see that we're currently on the home page and the home page is what we want to customize first. Then if we navigate over to the left hand side, you can see that we have these three options. If we click on app embeds, this allows you to search for specific apps and embed them on your website. We're not gonna to talk too much about this because we wanna spend most of our time on theme settings. This allows us to essentially customize the overall style and design of our website. Then above that, we have sections. 
This is how our page is built. You can see that on the home page we have a header up here, then we have this template down here, and then we also have the footer. So within the header we have the announcement bar, which is this bar up here, we have the header, which is this section here, and then we can also go ahead and add sections. If we come down to template, or essentially the page body, we have image banner, which is this banner here, then we have text banner, and you can see all of these different sections are highlighting these different elements. Then we have the featured sections down here. If we come down, we can go ahead and add a section if we like. Then down under footer, we have the footer, which again, we can customize if we like, or we can add a section above the footer. So again, under sections is where we can essentially customize all the different sections that make up our website pages. Okay, so before we do that, we're going to navigate back over to theme settings and then click on logo. Come down and add a logo to your website. And I'm going to select this logo and then click open. And as you can see, that's going to add the logo into my header. I'm going to come down and click select. And if you want to learn how to customize and create logos for your business, then what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description that will guide you through the process of using a free design tool called Canva to create your logos for free for your business. I use Canva nearly every day and for the purpose of today's tutorial, I used Canva to actually create all the different graphics for this tutorial. Okay, so once you've created and uploaded your logo, simply navigate down to Favicon image. This is the image that's going to display in your browser. So here's the Favicon. I'm gonna go ahead and click open. Again, you can create this within Canva. Then come down and click select. Once you've made any changes, go ahead and click save. Now I wanna make sure that the logo is slightly larger. So I'm gonna navigate across and that's gonna make the logo appear bigger on my website. Then come down the page and click on colors. This is where you can customize the primary colors as well as the secondary colors of your website. So remember you selected a website theme and these are the standard colors that come with that theme. You can go ahead and customize each of these different colors if you like and you want to make sure that these represent your brand. It's best to do this before you make other customizations to your website. So take the time to choose the right colors for your entire website. If you make a change here, then all the elements that are labeled Accent 2 throughout your website will be changed. So again, every website is different, so take your time to customize those colors. Then come down to Typography. This is where you can change the overall font in terms of your headings and your body font throughout your website. Again, take the time to play around with the different font types as well as size. Then we have other options like layouts, buttons, the product cards, blog cards, and more down here. You can always come back to this section to make changes if you like. A lot of these are set as default and are sufficient enough when you're just getting started with your online store. However, something that's important to do is to navigate down to social media and click here, and then add your social media account. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and do that now. And as you can see, I've quickly gone ahead and done that now. So what you want to do is go to your Facebook business page and then add the URL that will take people to your Facebook business page for this brand, as well as your Instagram and the other different social medias you use for your business. Then again, once you make any changes, click on save. And if we navigate down to the footer of our website, you can see that we have our social media icons down here. Okay, next, if we navigate down, we want to click on checkout. And we want to make sure that the checkout on our Shopify store is branded. To do that, navigate up to logo next to custom image and click select image. And I'm going to go ahead and add my logo. We can also add a background image, but I'm going to leave that for now. And again, for order summary, you can add a background image if you like. And I'll show you what this looks like. So first, I'm going to navigate up to save and then click on this home page and then click on checkout. And that's going to take us to the checkout page. This is an example of what the customer will see when they're about to make a purchase on our online store. You can see this is the product they selected and this is the branding that we added. This is the logo. If I navigate down the page, I can come down to position and click on center. And that's going to center align everything. That makes the page a lot more professional. If we come down to logo size, I'm going to select large and see what that looks like. 
And again, I'm happy with those changes, so I'm going to navigate up to save. Okay, so if we navigate back down, we can also add a background image to the banner if we like, and that's going to display across here. However, I like this. This is simple. This is sleek and professional. So I'm happy with the branding of my website. So we've talked about theme settings. These are all these different options up here. We've talked about all the important elements that we want to change right away before we launch our online store. Again, you can take the time to go through a lot of these different elements, but we've covered the essentials that you need to know right away. Okay, so now let's navigate over to sections and we're going to click on checkout and navigate back to home page. So let's start designing our home page. Okay, so what we're going to do is navigate through all these different elements on the home page. First of all, we're going to navigate up to the first section, which is this announcement bar. We can click here or we can simply click on the screen over here and that's going to generate this information. We can go ahead and change the text if we like. For example, what we could do is add check out our new necklaces and then down here we could link this banner, this announcement bar to our necklaces collection. I'm also going to change the background, so I'm going to go ahead and select one and see what that looks like, and I'm happy with that. Remember all of these color schemes, accent one, two, background one, two, and inverse, you can change within the theme settings over here. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm just going to go ahead and click save and then navigate back. Now what we want to do is click on the header. I'm going to navigate down and click on desktop logo position and I'm going to click middle center and that's going to center align my logo. I like the look of that. Then down here we want to customize our menu. I'm going to go ahead and click on change and then change menu and I'm actually going to go ahead and create a new menu. But first we want to create the pages that we want to add to our menu. To do that come down and click on pages and then click on add page and I'm going to type in about us and then come down and click save and then head back and at the moment we have a home page about us contact and I'm going to add a store page by clicking add page and then typing in store and then clicking save. You can always add a content later on if you like and this is going to help with search engine discoverability. So for now I'm going to click save and then head back and as you can see I now have these two additional pages. I'm going to head over to navigation again and then click on add menu. This is going to be called primary menu as this will be our main menu. Then come down and click on add menu item. I'm going to add about us again and then click on link and then come down and click on pages and then about us. So the about us item in the menu is going to link to the about us page. Then click add. I'm also going to go ahead and add another item and navigate up here and type in contact and then link and then pages and then the contact page here and click add. Then I'm going to navigate over to add item again and this time I'm going to type in store. This could be anything like shop now, buy our products, collections, it could be anything but this is going to take people to our collections and then I'm going to come down and then click on collections and then select the collection I created earlier, stunning unisex necklaces. And you can filter the collection with tags if you like, but I'm going to come down and click add. And the last menu item I want to add is simply the home page. And I'm going to link this to the home page and then add. Now I want to move the home page up to the top and then the store next to home, then about us and then contact. And I'm happy with this. Now remember I linked store to my collections. If I click on edit, you can see up here, I linked the store to this collection here. I didn't link it to the store page that I created earlier. But if I wanted to, I could link store to the store page. But I'm happy with this for now. I'm going to come down, click Save Menu, and then head back to customizing my online store. Then if you refresh the page under Select Menu, I'm going to come down and click on Primary Menu. This is the menu I just created. And as you can see, I now have a home, store, about us, and contact page. I'm going to come down and click on select, and then save up here. Okay, so I've finished with the menu navigation up here. Now on to the next section, which is this section here. And as you can see, that is an image banner. 
I'm going to go ahead and select an image. I'm going to use this image and click select. And I like the look of that. I'm going to come down and change the text here to the name of the business by navigating up to heading. And again, I'm going to come down to the subheader text down here, the description, and I'm going to change this. And I'm happy with that. I can navigate down. I can change the text to subtitle if I like. Now what I'm going to do is navigate up to save and then head back and then click on this element again. And then under banner height, I'm going to add medium. And that's going to change the banner height. I like the look of that. That looks a lot more smooth and professional. Then what I can do is click on this button here. And you can see that the button is shop all. I'm going to change this to buy necklace. And then down here, I'm going to change where this button directs to. So if I click exit and then click on collections, this button is going to send people to the collection I created earlier, stunning unisex necklaces. I can also add a second button and then the secondary button link. But I'm happy with that. I'm going to navigate up and click on save. Okay, so what we can do now is navigate back over next to buttons and that's going to take us to the overall structure of this home page again. What we're going to do is navigate down to this section here, which is featured collection. If we click here, I'm going to simply navigate down to collection here and change this, change collection, and then select the collection I created earlier. And because this collection only has three products, I'm going to select maximum products to show and drag this down to three. And then number of columns on desktop, again, I'm going to change that to three. And I like the look of that. I can also change the heading if I like. For example, I'm going to change that to stunning necklaces. And then I can also change the heading size, add a description. And then we have these other options down here, but I'm happy with this. Now under color scheme, remember you can select here and you can change the color scheme. So let's look at the different color schemes we have set up at the moment. If I click on accent one, that's going to change it to the dark. If I go accent two, that's going to be this blue color. Background one is clear. Background two is like a gray color and inverse looks like this. So I'm happy with background one. Remember you can change all of these options under theme settings. Okay, so we're happy with featured collection. I'm gonna navigate back. So we've worked on featured collection down here. Now we can navigate down to this footer here. Now before we do that, what we can actually do is add an additional section. So for example, we can add section to template or we can add section to footer. So I'm going to add a section to template, which is this part over here. We can also click add section here if we like to. And then we have these theme sections. We can add collection list, rich text, image with text, image with banner. We have these other options. If we click show more, we can add a video, email, sign up, contact form. You can see all these different options here. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and click on image with text. And then I'm going to click here and then add an image. I'm going to upload an image and this is an image I created earlier within Canva and then I'm going to quickly change this heading text and then down here I'm going to change this text here and I'm happy with that I can come down to this button element I'm going to change the button label to learn more and then if I come down to button link this could take people to a page if I click on pages that's going to take people to the about us page and I'm happy with that. So as you can see, I now have a few different sections. Again, I can navigate down and add a different section within the body of my homepage if I like. For example, this could be a email sign up. So this is going to help me build an email list so that I can start engaging in email marketing. And I want to add this section to every page on my website. I'm gonna navigate up here and click on the header and quickly go ahead and change this content here. And I'm happy with that. Now, if I click on the section itself, I'm going to click on color scheme, click on background two, and I like the look of that. And then I'm going to click save. And now what we can do is navigate down to the footer and start customizing the footer of our website. So any changes we make here will be displayed on the footer of every page of our website. Okay, so if I head over to this menu and click back and then come down to the footer here, what we can do is click on each of these different elements to customize. So if I click on quick links, that's going to take us here. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and click back 
and then down on info i'm going to add a menu into this section here by clicking heading and changing this to menu and then coming down and clicking change and then change menu and then click on primary menu and then click select so as you can see in my footer i have quick links i also have my primary menu in the footer for ease of navigation for website visitors and then i have my mission over here i can simply click here or click over on the left hand side and then change the heading to about us and then change the text down here and then what i could do is highlight a bit of text so let's say i want to highlight this i can then go ahead and link and then come down and link to a particular page and that's going to be the about us page and then i'm going to click insert so now if a website visitor scrolls down any website page to the footer they can access quick links, our primary menu, they can see the about us, they can click here, that's going to take them to our about us page, they can subscribe to emails, they can see the different payment methods that we accept, and then they can also access our social media channels. So I'm happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is click save, and then click on our footer, and then click on color scheme, and I'm going to select accent one, and I like the look of that. So you can see I have the contrast, I have the black, the white, some of these images in here, I have a bit of grey, and then I have this black colour down here for the footer. Okay, so I am happy with my online store, I'm going to click save, and then over here we can undo or redo changes we've just made, and then we can also click on this desktop icon, and we can preview what our website looks like across different devices. For example, this is our website on mobile. If there's any changes that you want to make because it doesn't look very responsive on mobile device, then you can simply make those changes. But I like the look of this. The menu looks good. I'm going to navigate up here and then click on desktop again. And basically what you want to do is navigate through each of your different website pages and make the appropriate customizations. So for example, up on homepage, we've already finished customizing our homepage. We can now click on homepage and then come down to pages and then click on default to pages. And here we have the about us page. We can also click up here in the menu and click contact, for example, and that's going to take us to the contact page. We can also click on store and that's going to take us to the collection. Remember this is our stunning unisex necklace collection that we added. And then all you need to do is navigate through the left hand side and customize each of the different sections. Again, we have about us. What I would do is simply navigate through each of these different templates and add the different sections I just showed you. So if I click on uh, template down here I'm going to go ahead and click add section I could go ahead and click image with text and then again down here I'm going to add another section uh, add section to template and this could just be rich text and all I would do is take the time to customize these different elements these different sections so I hope that makes sense. As you can see, it's really easy to add sections, add elements, and customize each of the different sections on your template, on your website pages. So again, what you want to do is head up to your menu, navigate through each of the different pages, and customize the pages just like the way we showed you. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save, and then exit out of our online store. Now, what we can also do is add apps to our online store. This is going to allow us to add additional features to our website. For example, if we navigate down to apps, what I want to do is add a chat option to my website page, a live chat where people can click on the chat from their mobile phone or from their desktop on our website, and then they can start a conversation with us or they can find information about our business, about our products. To do that, I'm going to navigate up here and type in live chat. And these are all the different live chat apps that we can integrate with our Shopify store. Now, some of these apps are paid and some of them are also free. So your monthly cost will be your Shopify monthly plan, as well as the paid apps that you've integrated with your online store. So for the purpose of today's tutorial, we're going to go ahead and add this awesome live chat feature up here, which is a free app. Navigate down and click on add app and then click on install app. Then come down and click on let's set up your FAQ pop-up. Here you want to add your domain. So we're going to add our proper domain. 
then add your contact email remember we added a forwarding email earlier so we're going to add that in here then come down and add your contact number your whatsapp number your contact page and your facebook page then click on next step and this is where you can set up your faq your chat widget so over here you can see that this is what's going to appear on your website if a website visitor clicks on this little chat icon and they can contact you via your phone whatsapp or click through to your contact page this depends on the information you added up here they can also search for their tracking number and then you can add articles down here for example you can add faq like how do i customize my necklace how long does shipping take how do i refund my order these are the different articles faqs that you can add to this chat again take the time to customize the widget over here then come down and click next here you can choose to enable the FAQ page if you like, like this. We're going to go ahead and click on finish. And just like that, we've added this app. Now let's go ahead and see what it looks like by simply navigating over to our online store and clicking view your online store. And then here what we can do is navigate over to dashboard and then simply click enable app. And as you can see within your theme editor under apps, you can see this app has been embedded. This has been turned on. Now, if you want to turn off any of your apps or you want to turn on any of your apps within the theme editor, you can simply click on app embeds and that's going to take you here. Now down here, you can see that this app is turned on. If I click on this, you can see this little chat information up here. We have contact information up here that the customer or website visitor can click on to get in touch with us order tracking articles down here that we can customize the way that we like. So again, I'm going to navigate back to the app and I'm going to click on widget and I'm going to change to Christmas and then navigate down to the widget icons and I'm going to click this chat icon because I like the look of that and then come down and click on publish. Then you can head up to go to storefront to preview what this looks like on your storefront once you make any of these additional changes. And then again, you can also head up here and click on view your online store to preview. Now, there are many different apps that you can add. If we click on apps, we can also type in email marketing and you can integrate free and paid email marketing apps into your online store. That's going to allow you to engage with your audience, to engage with your customers, to upsell, to educate and to offer discounts and more to your audience. Now, at the moment, you already have Shopify email automatically installed. So what we're going to do is head back to our online store and then click on apps and then click on email. And what we can do is view all automations. And this is where we can set up automations. For example, abandoned cart. What you want to do is turn this on. So if a customer leaves items in their shopping cart, they will get sent an email telling them or reminding them about the products that they left behind that they haven't yet purchased. And this is going to increase your conversion rates. Now, there are a bunch of email automations that you want to set up, as well as customizing welcome emails, product purchase emails, and more. If you want to learn more about email marketing when it comes to your Shopify store, what I'll do is link a few different tutorials down below that will help you get started with email inside Shopify as well as using apps like Klaviyo and setting up different email automations that are important for your online store. So go ahead and check out those tutorials if you're interested in diving deeper into email marketing. Now we also want to cover discounts. If we click on discounts here, this is where we can create discounts for our customers. These are the different options, free shipping, buy X, get Y, amount off order, amount off product. So if I click on amount off products, I can add discount code or automatic discount. The code could be anything that I want to add or I can generate the code and then I want to copy this code. Then I can add the percentage or fixed amount. So for example, it could be, let's say $10 and this could be related to specific collections, specific products. We can also add a minimum purchase requirements, customer eligibility, maximum discount uses, as well as combinations and then the active dates down here. And when you're ready to launch your discount code, simply go ahead and copy this code and add that throughout your different marketing materials within social media, within your email marketing activities, 
or you can send to specific customers. It's completely up to you. Now, if you want to learn more about discounts, what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description that will dive deeper into creating discount codes for your online store. Okay, so I'm going to discard this. Now, when you're ready to publish your online store and you're ready to start selling your products online, simply navigate over to your online store and you can see that your online store is password protected. Simply navigate over to remove password and your store is now open for business. If we navigate down to browse sales channels, what you can do is actually integrate Shopify with different sales channels like Facebook, Google, eBay, Shop, uh, Pinterest, TikTok, and all these other channels. And it's really straightforward. All you need to do is click on browse channels or you can exit out of here and you can click this arrow and you can type in the sales channel that you want to connect with your Shopify store. It's really straightforward and easy to connect your Shopify store with different sales channels. However, that is everything I wanted to share. That is how you can create a Shopify store and start selling your products online. If we navigate down here, you can view your store or you can manage access and you can enable that password again. You can also head over to analytics and you can view the analytics of your store in terms of total sales, sessions, returning customer rate, conversion rate, and more analytics down here. You can also view your customers up here as well. And that is it for this beginner's tutorial. What I'll do is add a following tutorial, a more advanced tutorial that will dive deeper into more activities related to boosting sales and growing your Shopify store once your online store is up and running. However, that is it for this beginner's tutorial. And that is it for this complete online store building tutorial using Shopify. Now, if you have any questions about Shopify, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel. And that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.